Hello, my divinities. <clears throat> welcome, welcome. As we prepare a little space here, I just want to go ahead and say thank you to everybody who has been signing up to the Patreon and Facebook subscription. You guys are the MVPs. And um, I actually want to share how cute I found it that <laughs> on the survey in Patreon, asking people why they're signing up to the Patreon, the majority of people answered that it's because they want to support me financially. <laughs> and I thought that that was adorable. Thank you so much for those of you who have that thought where you're thinking, you know what, $10 a month is worth the content that at the Sun of Divina puts out or Rose. So thank you. I appreciate y'all. I'm also very grateful of everybody who makes time to comment, um, who reacts to my videos, who shares my content. Those of you who send stars, who make sure you're following my YouTube channel or my Facebook page, all of those things genuinely make an impact on my business and my life. And so I am very, very grateful for all of you. <clears throat> that being said, let's get started with today's collective. What is the message for today's collective? What's the message for today's collective? Okay, we got number 18, healing, restoring hope. Okay. <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> and each one of these has three messages. So I'm going to go ahead and read all three. Number 18. Wisdom of the Herald says, Hope springs eternal and is waiting for you to take flight. Even in the darkest night, the star shines forth to lead the way. Hope does not expect anything, but rather looks forward and visualizes a day when the light will return once more. Hold on to that vision and press on forward. Actively restore your optimistic mindset. Help is on the way. Wisdom of the Dragon. Healing will come in its time, even when things seem the bleakest. And when you allow yourself time to heal, you will be refreshed and restored into new life and vitality. Tend to your wounds. Learn your lessons and actively take steps to heal and rebuild as you press on to newfound restoration. Restore. Refresh. Rejuvenate. Star Dragon Invocation. Can you think of a time or area of your life wherein you lost hope? Restore that hope in your heart each day as you actively engage in the healing process. Build each night and look to the stars as a reminder. Even when it is dark, there is a light that still shines. Hmm. Okay. This feels connected to today's first collective, <clears throat> but let's see. Let's see what. What's the message for today's collective? Okay, we're not taking these too many. So we start off with the Five of Cups. Okay. The Queen of Swords. The Ace of Cups. The Three of Pentacles. The Ace of Wands. Oh, we got two. The Two of Swords. <clears throat> oh, the Two of Cups. With the Nine of Swords, Five of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Seven of Swords, Knight of Cups, the Chariot. Hmm. This feels very connected to the first collective, but in the sense that I think this is very much about somebody wanting to come back, somebody saying, we can heal this. Um, you can still see a different version of me. The Five of Cups, this Queen of Swords is very disappointed. Um, whoever it is that hurt her, she's still not over it. There may be an opportunity to forgive. There may be an opportunity to get past it. But with the Nine of Swords, she's still in a place of anxiety. 
she's still in a place of worst case scenario. So, okay. I think that this is coming up because it's connected to the first co collective in multiple ways. First, this is part of how the queen is healing. By restoring hope in her heart. Um, if she lost hope regarding love, then that means that it's going to be very difficult for her to find love no matter how, how great the person that she encounters is. Because she's still in this energy of, look, this is, she's covering her eyes and imagining the worst case scenario. So whoever this Queen of Swords is, she's in this mentality of like, I already know, I already know it's going to lead to fighting. It's going to be an everyday thing. Then before you know it, I won't be able to trust this person because I'll realize the whole time I had rose-colored glasses on. Like, <sighs> mm -mm -mm. It doesn't matter if you're trying to heal a connection with a person from the past or if you're trying to heal yourself so you can move towards the future. This needs to be healed regardless. Even if you don't go back to the person of the past, even if you say, I don't want that person, I want a whole new collection, connection, that's okay. We've got the Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands. New is here. Whether it's new or old, you still have to address this. We've got three swords here and ten swords because it's the heartbreak, the one that needs to go. And we also have multiple threes. Three of Swords, Three of Cups, Three of Pentacles. So most likely this was due to a betrayal. Um, someone left you behind for someone else or someone betrayed you with a different person. Nobody's telling you you have to forgive that person so that they can come back into your life. But the universe is telling you forgiveness is a great thing, not because you want that person back in your life, but because you want to move on from this. And when you hold on to the pain, you hold on to the resentment, you hold on to what happened, you're not going to move forward. It's not conducive to you moving forward. So let's let's look into this a little further. Clarify the Nine of Swords. Six of Pentacles, Seven of Wands. Clarify Nine of Swords. Overall energy, Father of Wands. Okay, there's the culprit. <laughs> the culprit is somebody who is very attractive, naturally charismatic, magnetic. <sighs> but I do feel like this, this specific person and this Queen of Swords, the trust has been lost. So I'm not saying it couldn't work, but it would only work if both people, the Six of Pentacles is mul it's mutual, right? Both people need to be willing to give to each other. They need to both be willing to fight for this. So if, if you are, because I feel like this goes either way, if you're a Queen of Swords who still isn't fully over the past, and so you're still kind of like, this This might be my person. This might be somebody that I can work with. If you're going to fight for this, you better not hold back. You want this, you go all in. You completely focus on this. You don't do the half in, half out thing. But only do that if this person does the same. If they're not willing to do the same, don't even try it. It's already a disaster. And the same goes whether this person is old or new, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be the same energy. Clarify Five of Cups. And the thing about that is that you guys may, may like the collectives, but I will tell you that ultimately it's your discernment, the one that's going to tell you whether this person is genuine or not. I'm only supposed to be here as confirmation to your own intuition. Clarify five of cups. You know when someone's fully into you when they're not. Don't play with me. Queen of Swords again. Clarify five of cups. 
Father of Swords, which is the King of Swords, and the Three of Cups. So, <clears throat> Wheel of Fortune. I told you. <laughs> the Three Cups is already here, and now it actually shows up on the table. So either one, this is a friendship that fell apart. It didn't, it didn't get far. It didn't really have, um, it didn't move past this. Or this is a connection where there was a third party. Or it was a friendship that turned to a third party. There's, there is a lot of third party energy here. So I like that you're both showing up with King and Queen of Swords energy. Because it could be that this is someone, this is the past and the King of Wands is the future. Either way, this past really did you dirty. This situation you were in really left you devastated. Which is why the healing is restoring your ability to hope. Restoring your ability to believe that there's more than what you've already experienced out there. Clarify Queen of Swords. Five of Wands. Clarify Queen of Swords. Daughter of Cups, which is the Page of Cups. Clarify Queen of Swords. With the Eight of Pentacles. Six of Wands. So if this Queen of Swords wants to move past this, wants to rise above their past. They, has, they have to stop fighting their ability to dream. Because I feel like this person, the reason that they're afraid of hoping and dreaming, they're afraid of slipping back into that place of naivete. They're afraid of being the person that's made a fool of. But she's showing up as a queen of swords twice. So this may be connected. Some of you may take the message from last reading and mistakenly think it's yours but you'll know you'll know if you're a queen of swords or not because the queen of swords is not easily fooled so the king of swords is actually one of the few people that could fool her if they wanted to and unfortunately the past king you dealt with did want to and so now it's like this fear of like oh my god was i stupid no queen of swords twice this is not someone stupid this is not someone who's naive and the more she heals, the clearer her vision will get. So let me put it to you like this. I know we talk about the rose-colored glasses and beer goggles, but there's also such a thing as projection. And projection means that you are seeing through the lens of your experiences. And that can be a multiple thing. So for example, somebody who has slept with their boss to get to the top is going to imagine that everybody does the same thing. That's called projection. Somebody who has no problem stealing, lying, they, don't, they can't trust other people because they are projecting who they are onto others. So they believe nobody's trustworthy. So this queen, queen of swords, is not that type of person. She's very clear. She knows who people are and she understands their intentions, their motives. So she's not a fool and she's not naive. With the Eight of Pentacles, she's put in a lot of work to get even wiser, to get even smarter, to be more discerning. So trust that. Trust yourself. Just because somebody could fool you doesn't mean that you are foolish. Clarify Ace of Cups. It means that person betrayed your trust. That's what that means. We've got the Seven of Pentacles, Page of Wands, Four of Pentacles for the Ace of Cups. Oh, see, I think this is very much new love, though. 
I think it's very much new love. I think this King of Swords is in the past. And did they do damage? Yes. Are you going to allow them to dictate the rest of your connections? I should hope not. You're giving that person way too much power if you let them decide how the rest of your life will be, you know, lived. New love is here. Ace of Cups, Ace of Wands. But with the Seven of Pentacles, there's also this fear of like, what if I invest all this time and energy into this person again and they turn out like that King of Swords who made a fool out of me? Well, honestly, there's no guarantee that people won't lie to us. There's no guarantee that they won't betray us. But I'm going to reiterate again that if you are a person of integrity, if you're a person that shows loyalty, you know, honesty, you're devoted, you, you're the full package. You should never be afraid of people doing this to you. You know why? Because the people that do this type of thing to you, they are the ones losing out on you. Never be afraid. Because you're not the one losing something good. They are. Worry about them as in feel bad for them for having lost you. Does that make sense? So, Seven of Pentacles. Don't be afraid to invest. Because of the Page of Wands, this is new. This is exciting, but it's also uncomfortable. And I know with the Four of Pentacles here, your first instinct is going to be like, you know what, I need to close off. <clears throat> I need to protect myself. But remember, love only grows if you nurture it. Love is a seed that you need to water. You need to take care of it for it to blossom. You can't say, no, I'm not going to give anything to it until it grows. And then I'll decide if I no, no, that's not how it works. You want to build something, you build as a team. You build as a unit. Clarify the Three of Pentacles. Six of Swords. Clarify the Three of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles. Eight of Cups. With the Seven of Cups. Oh, oh, okay. So we've got multiple people coming in. I mean, we do have three aces. This could be three different people, an ace of cups, an ace of wands, and an ace of pentacles. That might be why we have three pentacles, because there's three different possibilities, three different opportunities. <sighs> but see... Whoever today's story is about, because I feel like we talked about three different queens today. There's the first queen in the first collective, the second queen in, in the other collective, and then this queen. And this queen is different than the others in the sense that she's borderline, borderline jaded. A little cynical. Because she feels like... Um, like all her hopes and dreams have been shattered from the previous connection. So can anything be real? Can anything actually be of substance? She has to move on from the past to find that out. She can't hold on to the past and try to live in the present. Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> So if she wants to move forward, she has to release the past, let it go, and focus on your future. Focus on restoring hope. Because this is like, I don't know, how many of you have had a boss that was terrible? That's very common, right? A lot of people have terrible bosses. Does that mean that you're never going to work for another person again? I mean, maybe. Maybe for some of you, that was the deciding factor in saying, I'm never going to work for another person. But for others of you, you have to say, no, that just tells me this job is not the one for me. 
and I'm going to go get another one. Same thing. Just because a relationship hurts you does not mean that love or relationships are just shit. No, it means that relationship did not work for you. So you leave it behind. You go towards a better one. Clarify so once. <clears throat> Four of Cups, Father of Swords, which is the King of Wands. I told you, I mean, Father of Swords, Father of Wands. Clarify Ace of Wands. Six of Wands and the Sun. Hmm. <laughs> Nine of Swords. I feel like there's the potential for three different people. Um, the one that the Queen of Swords is the most attracted to is the one that makes her really get in her anxiety. But again, this is telling me that this Queen of Swords needs to not only restore her hope, but she needs to heal and find her confidence. Because Nine of Swords is this anxiety born out of fear. Anxiety only comes out of fear. Your worry, you're concerned about something. In this case, if she was already betrayed in the past, she's concerned about being betrayed again. But this tells us also that she doesn't really value herself. Because when someone values themselves and they know that they are the prize, not that their partner can't be a prize either, but they know that they're the full package. They know that they are not the type of person you come along every day and find. Again, they're not going to act out of fear. They're going to act out of the, you know, energy of, if you betray me, you're the idiot because you lost me. Does that make sense? So with the Four of Cups here, I have a feeling she wants to reject this King of Wands, not because she's not attracted to him, but because she's attracted to him. With the Six of Wands, she feels like this person gets a lot of attention. And again, I, I, I want to address this actually right here or right now. Because I've seen that. I've seen people who say, oh no, you should never get with someone who gets a lot of attention. There's a difference, guys. There's a difference in somebody goes out there intentionally doing things to get attention and then interacting with a lot of people on the daily. That, yes, be careful with that. Because that's somebody who's attention seeking. That means that they'll never be satisfied with just your attention. But... If somebody is just in the spotlight because maybe they are employee of the month or maybe they're the best manager the, the company has, whatever, that does not make someone attention seeking. That means that they're proficient at what they do. So with the sun here, this person shines very brightly. <clears throat> this king of wands attracts a lot of attention and it's making this queen of swords uneasy. Why? Because she doesn't see herself as their match. And I'm telling you that that's the reason. She does not see herself as attractive as this King of Wands. And that's not good or bad. It's more that it's damaging the way that she feels like, I don't know that I could hold their attention. That's the problem. Nine of Swords. She's afraid she can't hold their attention. But they're very attracted to her. And instead of just exploring it, she's already freaking out. Clarify Two of Swords. The Emperor. Mm, clarify Two of Swords. Eight of Swords. Star. Mm. With the Death card. Oh dear, oh dear. So, two of swords. Two of swords indicates indecisiveness. Why? Well, there's a possibility that it is three different offers. And this queen is not going to know who to pick because they all have different qualities. With the ace of cups, this is someone who wants to invest in her. But with the page of wands, they may be a little immature in some ways. They may be very playful. That she may feel like, yeah, but I'll be I'll be the parent, basically, in that relationship. Although that person really wants to invest in me, really wants to pour into me. Eh, I don't know. They've got good qualities. I like how funny they are. I like how charming they are. They do a lot to please me. Ace of Pentacles. This other person is somebody who 
they've already been disappointed. They've been through their own shit, but they're very stable. They may be wealthy or they may have... Um, there's something about this person that guarantees a stable future because it's Ace of Pentacles. As long as you nurture it, it guarantees a stable future. And then we've got the Ace of Wands. This one is a very attractive person, <laughs> King of Wands energy. They get a lot of attention, but there's a lot of anxiety connected to that because the Queen of Swords believes that maybe they get that attention because they're doing things to flirt with multiple people. They may be doing things to... Like, they, they're they in a place of anxiety of like, I cannot hold this person's attention. So now there's indecisiveness of like, which one? Which one do I pick? One person is more lighthearted, is more playful, but I definitely feel an emotional connection. One person is very serious minded, but they really want to build with me. I know my financial future is secure and they are stable. They, they wouldn't betray me, but this person I've got the hots for. This person, I'm afraid, would betray me just because they're so attractive. They get a lot of attention. So now I'm indecisive about who I should really pick. Who is my emperor? Who is my true match? So with the Eight of Swords, again, she's sinking into fear. <laughs> Eight of Swords is the energy of, I'm not going to make a choice. I'm not going to make a choice because I'm afraid I'm going to pick the wrong one. Here's the thing about this. There is no such thing as the wrong one. There's no such thing. Each of these people could be a very fulfilling connection for multiple reasons. With the star, though, what she really needs to ask herself is what type of future does she want? What, type, what are her values? What does she value the most? If she's somebody who values emotional connection, then this one would most likely be the strongest candidate. If she's somebody who's, who values more than emotional connection, she values stability. She values practicality. She values, you know, I want to be able to depend on you. I want to be able to count on you. She's going to value this one. If she's somebody who really values passion and intensity, she's going to value this one. None of the options are wrong. They're just going to give her a different experience in love. Does that make sense? So with the star here, she needs to decide what type of future she wants. And she has to remember that these people coming in, they're not perfect. None of them are going to be perfect. They're each going to have their flaws. But which one, <laughs> this is how you'll know. Uh, there's several people that when you start getting to know them, you realize, you know what? I don't think I could ever be mad at this person. I'm so into them, whether emotionally, whether you know the stability is great, whether the passion is great, but you can't stay mad at them. It doesn't matter what they do. You're like, okay, let's work it out. Let's talk it out. That is very conducive to partnership because it creates harmony. It creates unity. She is going to find her two of cups. But with the death card, she really, really has to lay her past to rest. She has to let it go. Because she's allowing whoever fucked with her in the past, she's allowing that to influence the way she sees other people when they're not at fault for what that person from the past did. In fact, they're all different from the King of Swords. There's no other sword energy here. It's wands, earth, and fire, and water. Clarify Two of Cups. Son of Swords. Clarify Two of Cups. <clears throat> Ten of Pentacles, Son of Wands, Three of Swords. I feel like she's going to go for the person that she's attracted to the most. And again, that's not good or bad. That's just a choice she's making. But with the Three of Swords, it's making her really heal the wounds that she had, because I think that the person that the King of Swords from the past, she was also very attracted to, and that didn't go well. But this one, this one is going to go well. Ten of Pentacles. This one is going to lead towards stability, because whoever this King of Wands is with the Knight of Swords, they're very direct. They know what they want, and they want her. So I do believe that she is going to allow love to heal her wounds from the past or finish healing because honestly I feel like she's done a lot of work already so this is going to be just like the last stitch in this big cut if that makes sense 
So let's see. Let's see how it plays out. Um, I genuinely hope that this gave you guys some insight, something of value. As usual, I look forward to feedback, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.